Hey, you've reached Sacred Erotic Poetry, Sacred Sexuality and Ascension with Gila Nehemia. I am a Sacred Erotic Self-Love Coach, um, Writing Empowerment Coach, uh, Poet and Author, Your Spiritual Heart Guide. I help people who've experienced chronic trauma to um, follow their heart space and their divine wisdom. And um, I also help uh, people to write their story. So if you're looking to write your story, your memoir, no matter what age you are, um, I'm here to help you because when we do that, sometimes we have uh, many situations where we, we feel stuck in, in the particular scene we're thinking about or that moment in our past. And I help you get through those emotions. Um, so before we start, I want to thank you uh, for all of you who are listening today. Um, anytime you listen to this, it's totally divine. And I'd like to um, have you close your eyes and please do this only if you're not driving. Um, if you're in a safe, sacred space um, alone and you have some time, close your eyes and we'll take three deep breaths together and we'll set an intention. Um, so yes, let's start now. So take three deep breaths at your own pace. We're calling in our light teams, God, Source, Universe, Holy Mother, Holy Father, our ancestors, our, our guides to assist us in this um, next podcast, this particular podcast we're doing right now to connect our heart spaces together, to open up to all that is and all that will be, to connect to our own universal wisdom and to deeply resonate within ourselves. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Aho, and so it is. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you, and I'm grateful for my life. Um, just want to start with that moment of gratitude, and I'd love for you to just take a moment to be grateful for all that you have um, and all that you're currently um, creating. So this particular episode is about... Um, the power of love and really resonating with ourselves. And I, I wanted to get into that and why, why am I focusing on this? Specifically, I think the energies right now are really stepping into sovereignty. So if you're a divine feminine or divine masculine, you're really stepping into, you know, what do you want? What is your um, purpose? You know, what is your power? You're really letting go of things that are not serving you or situations that are just not serving you or um, your destiny your path or even your just your co-creation of what it is that you feel like you want to do just clearing your head clearing um the chatter of people and um and messages that may not be resonating you may feel like this is a time that you want to go within um, and really just listen to yourself and really listen. One of the questions I, I, you know, I asked. Part of this is going to be totally um, stream of consciousness because um, I, that's what I was writing some notes down. But I was like, you know, I think I just have to go into this and um, not think too much. And I feel like that's also the general message right now. Like, not to think too much. Like, overthink situations. If we're getting visions, if we're getting feelings, you know, just to to acknowledge them, witness them, and really just move on with our life and like flow with whatever's happening to us now, because this is the energy of the new, you know, and as I've said in earlier podcasts, like we're letting go of the old, we're stepping into the new and fully stepping in, you know, like fully stepping in as our, in our divinity, in our power. And even if we don't know what that is yet, um, asking, you know, asking our guys, asking God, like, what is it? what is it I'm here to create? Maybe things are changing and shifting. Like maybe you're making a sharp right turn in your life and, you know, just releasing things that are not serving you, even though they did serve you for a very long time, like you're just releasing it completely and stepping into a completely new outlook on your life. Um, and it's necessary. It's a necessary step, you know, and know that everything that has happened up until this point has been in love. And that any any healing that you've been doing, you know, it's been in love. And and some of the things I just wanted to um, to point out, I, I just realized something my daughter was saying to me the other day. You know, I was like, the kids are coming back; they're not going to be going to school. 
um, you know, for the next couple of months. And I was just like, wow, they were just in school for like a month and a half or something because of the, the whole um, pandemic. And I was like, wow, you know, so you guys are going to be home already. You know, like I was a little bit like, well, it's been really nice to have my own time, you know, because I'm working at home. And, and then I told my daughter yesterday, you know, it's, I really enjoy spending time with you. And she was like, oh, just the other day, you said you were kind of like disappointed that we're going to come back home, you know, because we're not going to be in school. And I realized like how I was, I was sharing my feelings, but I was being, you know, I wasn't really sensitive to what she might be feeling. And she didn't express it until that moment. And so I really felt like, you know, as much as I'm, um, empathic like sometimes I'm lost in my own space and am I really listening am I really um you know just asking myself and asking you you know are we really listening and are, are we um just expressing ourselves and in love and what do I mean in love I really want to focus about love today because uh you know in my group program um I really felt this call that you know when when we are connected with anyone can we come into it in love? You know, like today, like I do, I love you. I love all of you who are listening to this. I don't know, maybe many of you, maybe some of you I do know, um, but it was such a powerful session um, on Sunday with my group members about really just sharing what we love about each other and um, connecting to that space of love and then connecting to what we love about ourselves. And, you know, the question I have today, have today and, I, and, you know, I wanna come to these podcasts with questions for you because I feel like that has been really the path of my entire life. All of my writing is always about questions. Um, I question my own feelings. I question, you know, I mean, wisdom sometimes. I question, you know, I ask, my God, my guides, God, my light team, like, what, what do I need to do now, you know? And so I, I was just going to pose for you the question of, you know, are you truly listening to yourself? Are you truly resonating with yourself? Um, because sometimes, uh, like I have, like I used to run to mentors or uh, mediums or, you know, like readers or, you know, just to kind of get validation or to, um, you know, because I wasn't sure I wasn't clear and, and there is a place for that. I'm not saying that there isn't, there's definitely, you know, that's definitely um, a profession and something that you should use for some, be, some people that you trust. Um, though, at, you know, really it's, it's about connecting and resonating with what we believe is true. Um, and also like allowing us to not know but to, um, to, to truly like love our, when we love ourselves fully and we're fully confident, we still might not know and so we still might not have the answers, but then to allow them to come through, you know, like I said in previous podcasts, you know, it's just to still that, every, still that part of controlling, you know, wanting to know the outcome, wanting to know, and it's something I still struggle with, to be completely honest with you, I do, um, though I feel that this, this, part of many of our journeys is stepping into our power and stepping into our sovereignty, even if we're alone, you know, even if we're, we're like forging a new path. And even if there's a, you know, people that we had followed, like mentors that we had followed, you know, maybe not worked with individually, because I think there's a difference when you're working with someone individually versus following them and listening to their messages. It's, you know, it's a collective message. So it might or might not resonate with you. When you're working with them individually, it's a message for you, you know, because you're working with them, you're, you're, you're connecting with them, you have a sacred, you know, sacred agreement with them. Um, and they're here to, uh, to, to walk with you on a sacred journey. So it's a much deeper connection. Um, so if any of you are resonating with me, I would definitely recommend to step into the depth of that agreement, of that connection, um, because um, that's going to give you a lot more satisfaction than just listening and not necessarily resonating or sometimes resonating. Well, and what I want to also share is that sometimes our mentors or previous mentors or people that we follow that we no longer follow um, you know, is to be really clear, like, does this message really make sense to me? Does this message 
really resonate. And we could be following them for years, you know, like 10 years, three years, two years, I don't know. Um, but then to say like, to trust ourselves and be like, well, okay, things are falling away. Maybe this needs to fall away too. You know, maybe this just doesn't resonate with me anymore and I'm on a different path and I'm gonna forge this new path and I'm not really sure what it is. I'm not really sure how it's going to, um, to manifest or form, but this is the path that I'm taking. And not to be critical or not to say anything um, negative, but to just say that this is that's their path. This is my path. Um, and, I, and I think it's important because also people who are on, who may be journeying with us, maybe leaving our lives, maybe um, continuing on the journey with us, whatever that is, um, to just to always be in love you know, like to part in love, to, um, to connect in love. And, you know, what does that mean to part in love? Like, I always kind of wondered about that. Like, how could you part with someone who you're still, who you still love? Well, sometimes, you know, things don't work out at that moment, or they may be working out in the uh, later on, or maybe they're not going to work out at all. You know, like, we don't know. We don't know. But I feel deeply, and I feel this really deeply, that the more that we are really in love with ourselves and in love with, um, you know, with our path and God and, you know, and everything around us, like, regardless if something works out or not, it's not about the outcome, right? It's about being, exuding love, like living in love. And I feel like that is just an important point, you know, because we can manifest, we can have all these riches and wealth and the relationship and the family, and maybe even, um, you know, uh, change, change the face of the planet, you know, like this is our, this is our missions, you know, these are what we're going for. And yes, it's going to happen. You know, we're in this moment, changing, healing the planet. Many of us are on that path. Um, and it's in love, you know, even in like, let's just say you meet somebody and you're not resonating with them, like, and you share that with them. I'm not resonating with you, but it's in love. It's in like gratitude. You know, I just feel like it's a, at least for me, it's a completely different way of communicating. You know, like at one point, um, I don't do this anymore, but at one point I, um, I had, uh, you know, I was in and out of relationships, you know, and, and in dating apps and things like that. And it was really difficult for me sometimes to um, extricate myself from people that I didn't really like. And, um, and how do I do that or block them or, you know, just say I'm done with you, you know, kind of be mean, you know, and like, there's one thing to be mean and there's another thing to be honest and like grateful. You know, and I feel like that's the energy I'm in, you know, I'm in this energy of cultivating and I'm, and I, you know, I'm really just cultivating this because um, as we exude this, this is how our um, reality will be reflected to us. So I feel like that is a super important point. You know, the more that we honor ourselves, um, we honor others, the more that we connect to our own wisdom and power we honor the wisdom and power of others. And we decide if we want to listen to their wisdom or not to listen to their wisdom. You know, the more time you spend alone in stillness, in nature, in meditation, in uh, anything that makes you flow, art, writing, whatever that is for you, that could be a meditation. And, um, and really, you know, connect to your own truth in love like trusting your own truth, because we're all, you know, at least I was always taught to go to someone, you go to school, you learn from a teacher, you um, find a mentor, you find, uh, you find people to help you along your path. And that is true. Still, I am not refuting that that is completely true. But when we have been with somebody for a long time, even in relationships, sometimes we need to, um, to, you know, to separate, to go at it alone, maybe come back together, maybe not, but we still need to go on our own paths to find out what is the truth for us. Because sometimes when we're in relation with another and we're growing with another, it can be challenging if, um, you know, if there's things that are, are not jiving, it's not like you're not vibing anymore on the same, on the same train of thought. And so you, you have to take your space. Um, and, you know, and I know that um, women who run with wills, Clarissa Pinkola Estes says that really, really well. Um, you know, you sometimes you just leave, like you just go out, you know, you just take a break, 
you know, and, and doesn't mean you don't love that person. So again, we're coming back to the love. It doesn't mean there's no love there or there never was love there. And I think that's, that was really important for me to understand at least um, right now in this energy is like all my relationships, even when I felt like they were, um, we left on a bad note on like a, you know, kind of a not peaceful note. Um, it was still in love. You know, we may not have expressed it that way. Maybe the emotions were really high. Maybe we got into really bad arguments, you know, or maybe I was, you know, I just like, and I used to do this a lot, like just cut it off, you know, like don't talk to me anymore. Um, and uh, because I couldn't handle it and, you know, I just couldn't handle whatever was coming up or I just didn't like that energy and I didn't know how to express it, you know? So I think this is an important um nuance that like sometimes it's so intense it's so emotional and we're not we're still going under trauma you know uh, this is my specialty right so we're still in trauma and it's very difficult to have and i want to really bring this point home it's very difficult to have a healthy relationship when we're not fully healthy and i'm not saying that you have to be completely healed to have a healthy relationship what I'm saying is, if you're not doing the inner work for yourself, if you're not taking the time to really connect to what you're desiring and what's not working and, and you know, communicating about that with whomever you're in connection with, and it doesn't have to be just a romantic partner, it could be any kind of partner, um, then, you know, you, you also have to own that, that you're not healthy you know, that you're not still fully um, realizing your stuff, you know, because when you can really be aware and conscious of your own um, shortcomings and your own situations and what you're healing, your, what, what's going on with you, what's your healing, um, that, it, you know, then it becomes very difficult to expect another person to just know that you need X, Y, and Z, or just know that, you know, this isn't working for you, you know, without actually explaining it to them. And, you know, it, it can be very um, challenging. Relationships are the most challenging. And I've been recently listening to Marianne Williamson and, um, and, you know, she follows the course in miracles. And she's even said that like, that's, it's one of the, and many people said this, relationships are really the pivotal form of growth. You know, you're going to have a lot of soul growth in relationships, especially romantic ones, but in all relationships, because um, they're going to trigger you, you know, they're going to open up wounds that we try to hide from that we don't want to deal with, we don't want to face, you know, things in ourselves. And, um, and that's, that is, it's meant to happen that way. And it's up to us to decide you know, what road do we want to take? You know, which road do you want to go? The high road, you know, there are many roads and they all can lead to beautiful things. You know, it's not just like there's a good road and the bad road. That's still living in extremes, you know, but if you realize that there are so many roads, there are millions of roads, maybe there could be, you know, there could be, a, or there could be 10 roads. There could be a handful of roads. Um, which road, which road resonates with you right now? And maybe tomorrow it's going to resonate with another road, but to move with that as it comes into you and to not judge yourself, you know, to really flow with it, to, to really flow with the power of your own love. Um, and I feel like that is a new space that we're in as sovereign beings. How do we flow with the power of our own love? How do we flow with, you know, what we think today could be, could be different than what we think tomorrow. And that's okay. That's okay. And it, and it also depends on, you know, on other people, if they're resonating with you or not, and that everything's okay. You know, it's all good. It's all good because, you know, this is our growth and we all are growing in different ways. So I feel like the, the thread here is in love, the power of love. Um, you know, I talked about the wisdom in God, the trust in God, the surrender to God, you know, the, um, the releasing of the identity and all, what is it moving towards? It's, and, you know, choosing love over fear, but really now it's the power of love, the power that love can give you, you know, you know, I'm sure many of you, like the power I had, the power of my mother's love, 
helped me to forge new pathways. The power of a partner's love helped me to forge new pathways. And, you know, the power of my own love. This is, I feel like the biggest part of sovereignty is the power of our own love is helping us to forge new pathways in this energy, in this new energy. Um, you know, that, that we can stand as sovereign beings alone or with another in full wholeness in love. Whether that means, you know, two days or 10 years or eternity, you know, whatever that means. But the power of our own love is immense. It's so immense. And I feel like we're still... Um, Collectively, we're still kind of unwinding from like the conditioning of following another, listening to some other people, needing validation, you know, like um, unraveling all of those uh, thought patterns and emotions and, you know, um, shaky ground to stand on our own, you know, and to believe in ourselves and our, and our, and if a new path comes to us to walk on, like walk in it you know, without knowing where it's going, you know, use the techniques you've already have. You already have so many tools in your toolbox, you know, from all of the things that you've grown from these past, if you've been on this path, you know, for uh, four years, 10 years, 30 years, I don't know, however long you've been on this path, um, you have already so much wisdom. So to really, you know, connect to that and to know that, um, that you can see, you can listen to yourself, you can see yourself, you can hear yourself, you cherish and adore and respect yourself. Um, this is, I feel, the, um, the wisdom right now, because when we're in that place of true love and sovereignty, you know, we realize that there's so, there's so much power in our own love. There really, there's so much power. And there's so much that we can do when we can let go of the he said, he said, she said, I follow, you follow, you know, like this is the truth, that is the truth. What is your truth? The more that we tap into the truth of, of who we are and our own love, um, it really changes the entire scope of our world, you know, to walk into any room and just be like, I love you because you are you. And to not necessarily, you know, get into any kind of romance or to even be their friend, but I love you because you exist. You know, I love the flowers because they're growing. I love the ground because there's so, there's so much wisdom in it. You know, just to begin to think in that way of complete love, loving more yourself and others, um, really listening. I think I listened, but, you know, when my daughter told me that, I was like, whoa, I wasn't really paying attention um, to what I was saying because I love her dearly. You know, I love all my children dearly and I, and I love you, you know, even though I may or may not know you uh, because just because you are. Um, and especially the people in my inner circle, of course, I love them. They have, they have been through things with me. Um, they have experienced a portion of me, you know, but the depth, the depth, that's what I, I also want to share. The depth of, of our own love is like infinite. It's infinite. You know, many of us might, might want to partner with someone or we want more in our lives, but do we really, um, do we really step into the volcano of our of our own infinity? Um, yeah, again, questions for you to really ponder on. So I wanted to read a couple of poems from my book, um, Surreal Love, Kundalini Awakening Poetry that you can uh, get on Amazon, um, either as an ebook or paperback. So the first one is Unseen. Live in the ethereal. Touch, taste, and feel the chaos of your subconscious. Unlock the keys of your heart. Feel, grope your way through life. Trust in your intuition, dreams, and desires. Allow it to guide you to the next dimension of your consciousness. Satisfy the longing, the yearning of your soul. 
Walk blindfolded in the darkness while you heighten your other senses. Twist your heart with soul animals to learn the ways of the witching hour. Listen to the sounds of the beasts that emerge magically in the night air. Crawl into the crevices, spaces hidden, moving steadily towards the light. Dance with your whole energy at the break of dawn. Collapse your ego to the radiant love within. Flow with the vibrations led by the calling of your deepest cravings. Unlearn the ways of humanity. Embrace in sovereignty the waves and frequency of the universe. I really love this line. I wanted to share, um, tr twist your heart with soul animals to learn the ways of the witching hour. You know, I have a few animals and there's a lot of animals. Um, my neighbors have a lot of animals. And, um, you know, animals give us so much um, wisdom. You know, today, even I was just, my cat has been coming to me recently. And, you know, I was just like talking to her. I was like, so what is the truth? You know, like, tell me the truth, like share your wisdom or if she purrs next to me or, you know, it's just her love expressing to me or she'll put her head, um, her, her third eye to my third eye. It's the love being expressed between us, the, the wisdom being transferred without um, words. And, and that's also another thing I wanted to mention today. It's like, there's so, there's so much left unsaid and sometimes we can't say it. Sometimes the depth is, is beyond words. You know, it's beyond art, it's beyond, you know, it's just is and accepting, you know, going back into the acceptance of what just is and realizing again, like, you know, we use the word love and love, maybe not even enough, you know, maybe it's, it's cherish, maybe it's a door, maybe it's, um, 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 entranced, you know, there's so many, um, nuances and every moment it's a different, it's a different, you know, it's like, it can be this, um, it can be blissful, it could be peaceful, it could be exciting, it can be erotic, you know, it can be um, uh, natural, it can be stable, it can be graceful. It's like there's so many adjectives, right, that can come into play. Um, and, and to really just connect, just connect into that silence. Um, and so that's this next poem. Um, I, um, I talk about that. It's called natural order. Clouds like waves undulating, undulating in the sky. The evening brush painting pink and orange hues. Energy shifting, breaking down the uneasiness within. Embodying the truth in the now, the present moment. Removing obstacles that lie in the first step walking in the dark, feeling our way through, groping for something, nothing is tangible, yet it is here, beyond the senses, perceiving a knowing, a meeting of souls, galactic openings for those that feel the calling, stepping into the pulsating of your heart, accepting vibrations, disintegrating the suppression, allowing the frequency of love to guide you into the cosmic oneness, lying in the silent spaces of your existence. So I feel like silence is, has been always a big um, thread in all of my work. And of course, love in the oneness. Um, as I said earlier, you know, loving the trees, loving the plants, loving the flowers. Um, this is the oneness. This is the unity. Um, and the more that we step into those nuances as a part of our life and not just as in meditation and then we step into another world when we're out and about, um, having to totally embody it, I feel is definitely that energy that we're in now as we really um, embrace our own power and sovereignty. Like how do we embrace the power of love within ourselves? You know, how do we embrace all of ourselves without, you know, still deciding to put on a mask if it, fe if it feels like it might hurt? 
you know, like, how could I have said in love to my child, like, oh, yeah, I really love you. I love being with you. And sometimes I like the silence, but I really enjoy you. How that could have been, that could have felt completely different than what I had, that I said before. <clears throat> because it's also expressing the love of myself and the love of another. And that sometimes it's, it's not working, but, but most of the time it is. And so, you know, and, and respecting that, respecting that idea of sovereignty within yourself and um, interdependence and togetherness with another. And I feel that is the path that we're all moving into right now, wherever you are on that timeline. Um, so I'd love to know if this is resonating with you. I'd love to know, uh, I'd love for you to send me feedback at gila at gilanahemi.com. And if you would like um, to schedule a 15 minute call with me, please do so at uh, gilanahemi.com. It's a free chat. Uh, if this is resonating with you, if you'd like to go deeper, if deeper into your own sovereignty, into your own love of yourself, into um, you know higher heart relationships, soulful relationships of really speaking your truth and stepping into your purpose, really in love. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you. I'd be excited to talk to you, Re wanting to write your own story. Um, this is something I do and I'm really um, called to guide people to write their own story, to be vulnerable. You know, it's like so much of our lives are private and we don't have to share everything. And sometimes our stories can just be for ourselves. You know, they don't have to be published. They don't have to be public. Um, but just writing it down is releasing it and it's allowing it to, um, to empty your mind. And, and I feel like no matter what language it is, maybe it's even another creative art form. Um, I specialize in writing. So if that is calling to you, definitely schedule a call with me and uh, we can talk about it because if we're resonating with each other, you know, re definitely take the next step. So you can really step into your own wisdom. You can totally be in the power of love within yourself and others. Because this is a call. This is the change in humanity. This is a new earth. It's all about the heart space and love. So I wanted to just call, close the space um, and to thank you for listening today. So I'm going to, um, Close my eyes. I invite you to close your eyes and take three deep breaths with me. I'm going to thank our light team, our guides, God, source, universe, uh, Holy Mother, Holy Father, for gracing this podcast session today, to gracing us with love the connection of love between our heart spaces, the connection of love within um, to assist anyone on this journey, to help them and to help them to ask their light teams for assistance if they need it and to reach out for others to be on their path to help them to truly grow. And, um, and we grow with each other. It's as you resonate with anyone, it's truly about stepping into that because that's how we all grow. And we grow in unity and in oneness and in love. So I want to just extend my heart to yours, my love to you. I love you. I am so honored that you are listening to this today. And I thank you and I, close the space in love, this sacred, sacred space, um, sending you peace, blessings, and infinite, infinite compassion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Om Shanti. Shalom.